Hey everyone, Tactics here with a quick guide to the other side on Mythic Difficulty. In this video I'll go over the dungeon specific covenant bonus, the different boss mechanics, as well as any important trash mobs you should be aware of. If you found this video useful, please make sure you like and subscribe for more content like it, and let's start off with the bonus available to Night Fae Covenant members. In set locations around the dungeon you will find these haunted urns, which can only be interacted with by members of the Night Fae Covenant. When they do so, it will cause a short cast time that is interrupted by damage, but when completed it will stun all enemies within 30 yards for 10 seconds, making it great to CC big packs or just scary trash mobs. From there, let's move on to bosses, starting with an old friend in Hakkar the Soul Flare. He will shoot corrupted blood at a couple players, which will spread to anyone within their red circles, so make sure you're spread out. Sons of Hakkar will fixate a random party member, dealing AoE damage to the whole party that increases over time, so make sure you focus them down. On death they become a very large puddle so watch out. At 100 energy the boss deals a burst of damage, gains blood barrier, and channels blood barrage which shoots swirls that will reduce your damage done if they hit you. DPS through this shield and interrupt to stop the barrage. Continuing with familiar foes, next you'll face the mana storms. You'll fight one at a time, switching every 30 seconds, starting with Milhouse. He'll spam cast Frostbolt which you'll want to kick. He'll also spawn power crystals that will beam towards him, which you'll want to soak as if it reaches him it will buff him and do party damage. It grants the soaker increased damage done but also gives them a stacking dot so try not to die from this. Diabolical Doom is a lethal party hit that can only be interrupted by Maleficent's laser extreme ability. This will target two players and draw a line between them that will erupt and stun any target hit, so make sure you stand so that Milhouse is on this line. When Maleficent swaps in, she will begin to summon squirrel bombs which players must disarm. Aside from that she will spam Buzzsaw on the tank which puts a stacking bleed on them which can be hard to drop stacks for. To do so reliably you can stun her thanks to Millhouse, who will debuff a player with Shadow Fury. This will stun anyone in it after a few seconds and deal some damage so try and position yourself so that only the boss is hit. She will also cast Aerial Rocket Chicken Barrage which just deals heavy party damage that you'll need to heal through or if you can stun with Shadow Fury. At 10% health the bosses will stop fighting ending the encounter. Next up we have Dealer Zayexa, who will spawn displacement traps throughout the room that will shoot you into the air. You want to avoid these as you'll need them for other mechanics. She also has Displaced Blast Wave which is a frontal line you should avoid, and Arcane Lightning which is a dot that increases your arcane damage taken and then bounces to the nearest player, so watch where you're bouncing this to. Outside of that there are two types of explosions. The boss will cast Explosive Contrivance, at which point everyone wants to step on a displacement trap to be launched in the air and avoid the damage. She could also put a bomb on a player instead, in which case only that player would want to step on a trap so that the bomb detonates in the air. That brings us to the last boss of the dungeon in Muzela. Your damage in the boss phase doesn't matter too much so focus more on surviving. He will shoot cosmic artifice at players which will leave a bomb after expiring or being dispelled that will explode in a 10 yard radius. He also has a 3 part combo in Master of Death which will deal big damage to either the left side, the right side or the front part of the platform in a random order. This is telegraphed by his arm motion so keep an eye out. He also has Soul Crush which is a big tank hit that also leaves a nasty dot and if no one is in melee he will deal a bunch of shadow damage to all party members so make sure your tank is always in range of him. After two Master of Death combos Musela will become untargetable and summon portals that will move you across to different parts of the room. There are four shattered visage adds in different corners of the room and you'll want to kill them while dodging the explosions. Once killed their nearby totem will be unprotected so click on it and it will deal 20% of Muzela's health at the beginning of the next phase. You have a limited amount of time to do this so try and kill as many as you can. From here the fight repeats though you will get a stacking 10 second 30% haste and move speed buff in one somnity's fervor at the beginning of each phase 1 based on the number of totems you destroyed. With the bosses done, let's talk trash, starting with Death Speakers, who have a couple kickable spells in Shadow Core, which is just damage, and Death's Embrace, which will grant haste to an ally. They also have a line attack in Erupting Darkness, which will knock players back a large distance, so make sure you dodge it. Enraged Spirits patter on Muzela's circle, and for the most part, you'll want to avoid them, as they're quite scary. They will summon Enraged Mass that deal damage to players within yards, so stay away from them. He will also cast Rage, which deals a ton of party damage over 6 seconds that you just need to heal through. In Hakkar's hallways, there's a couple adds to be aware of. The Devoted adds will just cast Devoted Sacrifice, turning into Sons of Hakkar from the boss fight if successful, so kill them before they finish. There's also Deathwalkers who have a Bladestorm attack melee need to get away from, and on death become untankable spirits that will just melee players, so you'll need to kite them. Hoodoo Hexers and High Priest both have heals in this area as well, which you'll want to kick. 
Moving on to the Mana Storm's Hallway, Defunct Dental Drills will cast Haywire, which deals huge party damage, but can be LOS, so make sure you're in a position to do so. Headless clients have a spin attack they'll use, so move away and try and stun them to interrupt. Lubricators are another important add, which will cast an AoE nuke and lubricate in a self-heal and self-cleaning cycle, both of which you'll want to kick. There's also a little frogger portion in this area, so make sure you cross without hitting the slimes. Last up, we have Dealer Zyx's area, which has a bunch of Shimmer Moth that will shoot Shimmer Dust swirls at players. If hit, you'll need to be decursed, otherwise you'll have to continue jumping so you don't fall asleep. Aside from this, Sprig and Bark Binders will cast Pacifying Mist, which silences all allies in an area, so make sure you avoid it. And the Dragon Mithresh casts Wailing Grief that will fear nearby party members, so make sure you get away from him when he starts casting. But that concludes my quick guide to the other side on Mythic Difficulty. If you found this video helpful, please make sure you like and subscribe for more Warcraft content. For those interested in more guides, I'll be putting out quick guides to Castle Nathria shortly after the raid opens, as well as more in-depth Keystone Master Guides for all the dungeons once Season 1 starts. If you want to keep up to date with me, you can follow me on Twitter or check me out on Twitch, both at Tactics. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.